Welcome again to Bob's Barn Workshop. Here we are in the middle of February. Lots of snow in the northeast here near Buffalo. Mama filled the bird feeder today though. Today's uh, video is not so much a tutorial as it is just a reveal. Um, back when I was a teenager, before I lost all my belongings in the flood in 1972, I had a really nice refractor telescope, a three-inch lensed telescope uh, from Sears. It was really actually a good one. Well, this Christmas, after almost 50 years, my wife has rewarded me with a fantastic Celestron or Celestron Nexstar 8SE 8-inch Smith Cassegrain reflecting telescope. Uh, it has huge light gathering power. It is computer controlled via this handheld remote, which is on a cord like a phone. It has a rotating mount. Once you sight this in and align it, you can tell the remote to go to any celestial object as long as you put the proper date and time in. So it knows where to look and it'll point at that object without having to search for it. Uh, one thing I added almost immediately was I added a Barlow lens which is a doubler. This, is a, this just basically doubles your power of any eyepiece. I got a moon filter because the moon is so bright you just need to dim it down a little bit. The other accessory I bought was an electric focuser. Now we're going to do just a little tour. I'm not going to try to show you. Again, this isn't a tutorial. This is just a show and tell. So I just turned on the power. Now see it tells you to begin alignment. But I'm not outside and I can't aim at any objects. Now the sun is starting to come out and I did get a sun filter, but you have remote controls on here, watch. This is the one you want to start aligning it yourself. Now right now I've got in batteries, but it can be powered via a 12 volt remote. A 12 volt adapter. Back to the telescope. One thing I did buy almost immediately too was an electric focuser from watching videos online uh, it's so nice well my dream is is to be able in the cold winter is one of the best constellations are out and with this electronic focuser and some USB cables I can control the telescope outside from my laptop inside so I'm not gonna have to sit out there in the cold <clears throat> I can look at I <laughs> And the next step if I want to show you is, is I actually bought a video camera for it. So anyway, we can go up and down here. This is just for rough aiming and the original uh, alignment. Of course it comes with a really, really, really rugged tripod. Well, I mean, you got to buy it, of course. So right now I only have one magnifying lens, and that happens to be a 25 millimeter, which gives this scope about 82 power because of its focal length. The giant 8-inch mirror gives it great light gathering power for, my dream is, is to do a lot of celestial and uh, astronomical photography. So let's set up that camera and maybe we can even get a view of the sun, seeing the sun is coming around. So all I need to do is I gotta mount the camera on the back here. It mounts just like an eyepiece. Run the USB cable into the laptop. I need to run a program called Sharp Cap, which lets me uh, control the camera's uh, focus and all that. Not the focus, but the uh, exposure and uh, frame time. And I can collect a bunch of frames. And there's all kinds of uh, software you run it through that actually uh, takes a whole, all the images and 
lays them on top of each other and averages them and you get a much clearer picture in the end but it takes a lot of processing time so being new to this I can't tell you how to do it I'm just trying to learn how to do it myself so all I'm gonna do is plug in the USB cable so hold on a minute so here is the little camera that I got. This is an SV Boney, S V B O N Y, 2 megapixel astrophotography camera. Now you don't have to take photographs with it now. It fits onto your telescope just like an eyepiece. Plugs in with a USB cable. This is no, no, this is I'm just doing this for the first time, guys, so. I need to put the adapter on. Now I have a filter coming called a, uh, keep this covered as much as possible. It's, it basically it's a stray light filter and what it does is it narrows down the bandwidth of the light that comes into the camera so you're, uh, I don't know where the black's coming from. Of course, I got this on uh, Amazon. My USB cable, the software driver. Now I think it's already installed the software driver because I knew this camera was coming. I got a little lens cleaner here. Let's see what the USB cable. It's got a double end on it. I don't know why that is. Daisy chain. new Margo. Do we plug it into two USB ports so we get twice the current? Maybe. I guess that's what I will do. Alright, so that's all there is to this little guy. I put the extension on here. I haven't got the filter yet, but we're gonna look at the sun today maybe. And the sun, I have a huge sun filter that goes on the front of the telescope. You can't let the sunlight into the telescope body itself because it'll cook it just like a solar oven. So you've got to block the sunlight before it comes in. And this is what you do. This is for looking at eclipses and you look you can look at the sun with this. This cuts down 99 point some percent of the light from the sun. All right, let's get this hooked up. So I got my bony camera here, <laughs> and I just removed this whole eyepiece that's on here, and I put in my camera. All right, now we got to remember we never, 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 never look at the sun. without that filter on the end. But right now we're just gonna look out into the yard. I'm gonna unscrew the lens cap here. And lens cap. <sighs> Plug in the camera. It says wait for now it's saying installing the software driver to wait. Of course if I do this outside I'm gonna to have to get a USB hub or something to run out there. Because I'm gonna have the USB control of the focuser motor too. So I've just plugged in the USB cables here to the camera. I just started the software. All right, we'll come back when that finishes loading. So I've taken the camera off in the telescope so I could figure around with this, figure around with this. And um, I was running a program called SharpCap, which was outdated. 
Luckily, the DVD disc, that, the CD that came with the camera, had the proper uh, version of Sharp Cap 3.2 something. Okay, so this is the Sharp Cap program running with my camera, and right now I got the lens cap on it. And if I take the lens cap off, I get white, and as I bring my hand closer to it, It gets darker and lighter. So the camera's working. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the take the sun filter off. I'm going to aim it away from the sun. We'll see if we can see any land objects or anything like that out the window. Now it's going to be blurry. Oh, I got the sun filter on there. Yeah, I'm not going to see anything with the sun filter, am I? All right. So now, I see a lot of white. Right now, I don't have the focuser hooked up to anything, but I'll have to look at the menu here. We'll come up with focuser, enter, move in and out, all right. Sometimes they say you need an extension on this, so I'm going to, oh, 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 wait, 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 I'm starting to see. Something here. Up, up, up. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm going to open the window again. Just briefly. Because it's cold out, and I don't want the dang cats running out, so I have to go after them. Especially my wife's cat. Exposure here. I'll try a little bit more focusing. I'm just looking at some tree branches out here apparently. So when you move the camera quickly, it's called slewing. Oh, sorry, I guess you guys weren't seeing my images of the tree I was looking at. I did get to see a tree branch through this. All right, guys, well, seeing that I don't know one thing about what I'm doing. And unfortunately, I can't focus on the sun quick enough because the sun moves very quickly. Or the sun doesn't move, the earth moves very quickly. I should have got you a couple of pictures, so I'm going to put... the sun filter back on again. So this is probably bad contrast, isn't it? This scope is heavy, by the way. I'll move them out to the center of the room a little bit. Um, there's just two Velcro strips. And four little pads. shield and one on the tube. If I can get it separated here. There we go. Opposite each other like this. Oops. Do one over here. 
I guess you could do both of them at the top. But being a perfectionist, I like things symmetrical. strips that you just stick him on. Now even though you might block a little bit of this lens, the lens is so huge that it gathers so much light, even if there's dirt on it, it doesn't matter to the Velcro, or I mean to the, the sensor because it's got lots of uh, surface area. So I think this is going to wrap it up for now. I'm just going to say I was using Sharp Cap 2 3.2 is the image capture software for the camera. You do have to load the driver for the SV Boney 305. There's several other programs in there. Now there's one called CPWI from Celestron which basically shows you like a star map and once you get your so you have to calibrate your scope you have to take it outside and aim it at three different bright stars so it knows where it is and what the date is and the time of day and all that within a second then the stars will be then it knows where to point and it tracks so as you're looking at the star you don't have to keep recorrecting it the mount automatically follows the star that's the best part because the stars move fast they are out of view very quickly before you can get it focused even. So um, when you're looking into the deep sky, usually the focus stays the same anyway because the virtual focal plane is almost, you know, infinite. There's a couple other programs here. There's one called CFM that I downloaded. Um, I forget what that actually does. <laughs> oh. Celestron uh, Firmware Manager. That's just for updating my uh, remote. Uh, putting new software and stuff into the remote. But then there's one called Starry Night. Uh, that's also like another... planetarium program. I'm going to try running it. I tried to run it and then it crashed and I tried to run it again then it said you can't run it because there's already one in progress. So I don't know how to get rid of that computer geeks. But I'm hoping that this uh, I can get Starry Night in here. This computer is incredibly slow and sluggish. I don't know why it's so bad but it has a beautiful uh, LCD uh, uh, yes, LCT, I guess it is a 17-inch display, which is nice for sitting out there at night and looking at stars, right? So. Oh, there comes the sun out. Again, it's super, very hazy. I'm not going to be able to see much. The sky, the air is not clear today. This thing is taking a long time, sorry. Says extracting the software installation progress. Okay, now when I say yes, I want to change the computer if it comes up with an error. Oh, it didn't. Then it flashed a little thing, and that was it. Oh, it's grinding. <laughs> I'm getting a little progress arrow going around. All right, guys, well, I'll let you know how this comes out. Okay, there's the setup wizard. Next. Okay, it's working. Yes. All right. Well, I'll come back when this all gets downloaded and we'll look at it. <laughs>
Mama's feeding her little friends too. I don't know, are those cowbirds? Catbirds? There's a lot of them. There's some doves there, but those aren't sparrows. Those are, uh, they're almost all black. I think they're cowbirds. Of course, I thought cowbirds had browner heads. And then there's some house sparrows out there, the guys with the little black stripe on their head. And uh, doves. And I see what else. More than catbirds. Up in the feeder. They kick a lot of the seed out, but the birds on the ground. Oh, something spooked them. You can see who's watching down here. See, this is just like entertainment. That's Teddy. He's watching Birdie TV out here. Ten feet away from his nose, and he can't do anything about it. Oh, there's a house sparrow there. English sparrow, we used to call them when we were kids. I'm going to look those birds up. I've got a bird book right here. I'm going to look them up and make sure what they are.